This is going to be a really weird video. Normally, when I show you an old computer game, I'm full of interesting stories about where it came from, who wrote it, and its historical context. I'd love for this to be another one of those videos, but instead, I'm going to tell you about AWACS. I don't know much about AWACS, and as near as I can tell, nobody else does either. So this video is a cry for help. If you know anything about the provenance of this game, please contact me in the comments or at tleaves11 on Twitter and tell me everything you know about it. I played AWACS back in the day, around 1982 or 1983. I definitely pirated it like apparently everyone else. It's another game that hails from the tail end of the Cold War when normal Americans had an everyday belief that they were at reasonable risk of being nuked by the Soviets. AWACS is a game that is absolutely steeped in the feeling of the Cold War. The Soviets are going to nuke us, we're going to nuke the Soviets, and no one is going to get particularly upset about it. Sometimes you just nuke cities, that's how it goes. I'm being a little bit flippant, but I really need to communicate to you how profoundly weird growing up in the nuclear era was. The closest analogy I can come up with is if you talk to young people today about climate change. Some of them view and then the earth becomes uninhabitable as the expected end state. That's how we thought about nuclear war. Kubrick's film Dr. Strangelove wasn't just lampooning or exaggerating the mutually assured destruction mindset. It was kind of a documentary. Let me call back to my video on the Avalon Hill game Nucor, which talked about growing up in the 1970s. The thing I want to point out here that's kind of weird is what a strange way to think about the world. What a weird way to like normalize this in a game. And to be clear, I don't think the people at Avalon Hill were monsters. Games like this were all over. Um, we play Fallout today, which kind of takes an ironic uh, look at that era. But I promise you that things like this were not ironic. This was, well, we might have to go to war, and, and this is something we spend a lot of our time thinking about. So let's make it into a game. Um, Nuke War was pretty grim, but consider AWACS. You're not looking at an abstract map of an unnamed country. You're flying over Central and Eastern Europe. The cities being nuked are Berlin, Warsaw, Tallinn. The horror underlying this game is unspeakable, and that was normal. Sure, this is surprisingly direct about it, but companies like Strategic Simulations had a ton of games centered around this exact idea, a future nuclear conflict between the USA and the USSR. The horror was table stakes. Let me take a moment to describe the theory and mechanics of the game. You are flying an AWACS jet performing surveillance over the Soviet bloc. AWACS stands for Airborne Warning and Control System. It was essentially a military jet, the Boeing E3 Sentry, that was built on the airframe of the earlier Boeing 707 and given advanced radar technology. The planes are somewhat iconic because of the gigantic radar rotodome that was on its back, spinning at six revolutions per minute. In the game AWACS, you fly the plane by using keys on the keyboard to move north, south, east, or west. As the plane moves, the game's playfield shifts around. In the lower right quadrant of the screen, you see a wider radar view of all of Europe. When you see a moving dot indicating a jet of some sort, you try to move your view field to the part of Europe where that aircraft is. When it's on screen, you'll see a number moving rapidly. Tap that number on the keyboard and you get some information about the targeted plane. Maybe it's an allied plane like a B-1 bomber or an F-15. Or maybe it's an enemy plane such as a MiG-25. If the plane is an ally, you want to do nothing. Just let it go on its way so it can nuke a Soviet city. If the plane is an enemy plane, you tap the spacebar, and one of your cities launches a missile that destroys the plane. If the enemy planes reach your city, that's a tragedy, so you try to prevent it. 
A level consists of waves of many, many planes, and you don't have enough fuel to stay airborne for the entire level. If you hit the T key, a refueling plane is dispatched and slowly makes its way to your location and refuels you. It is absolutely possible to accidentally shoot down your refueling plane, so try not to do that. After the level ends, you get a bonus for every one of your cities left alive. At this point, the game might sound familiar. It feels very much like a plane-based variant of Atari's classic arcade game, Missile Command. It's a fair comparison, although it requires a lot less dexterity. If all of these options weren't enough, you get one super weapon per round, similar to the Smart Bomb from Defender or the Super Zapper from Tempest. These accumulate, so if you can get through a level without using it, you can bank it for later use. Using the super weapon by tapping the slash key causes a wave of missiles to rain out of all of your cities, killing every visible enemy on screen. The way the game usually ends for me is I make a mistake and run out of gas. In preparation for this video, I wondered, maybe there's a really awesome kill screen if all of your cities are destroyed. Well, I tried to lose that way four times over, and I just couldn't. So I was talking with a friend about AWACS, and they asked me, well, what happens when you lose the game? I said, well, you run out of fuel and your, your plane crashes. And they said, no, no, what happens if all of your cities are destroyed? And I realized that I have never actually lost a game of this that way. I always lose by crashing. So as an experiment here, I'm going to try um, just letting those darn dirty Soviets blow up all of my cities. Our plane is here. It looks like we're over West Germany. Remember West Germany? TU-26 looks like it just nuked something in Czechoslovakia. Remember Czechoslovakia? So that's interesting. So I never quite realized that a city could take more than one hit. KC-707, take me away. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that looks like Brussels just took a hit. I can't believe I never thought to do this. I'm just going to have a moment of silence here for the people of Brussels. The problem here with my let's have everything blow up plan is that those planes keep flying if you don't kill them. So it's been 40 years and I still don't know what happens when you lose all of your cities. All right, I'm going to try this again. So if the theory that I'm subscribing to is correct, the wave won't end if I don't kill their planes. But if I kill their planes, then they won't blow up the cities, right? So the scheme I'm going to go for here is maximum damage. I'm going to let each plane blow up a city and then I will shoot it on the way out rather than on the way in. So, okay, so the cities are actually the things that are firing the missiles. So that's part of the challenge here is that as those cities are destroyed, your missiles end up having to travel from further and further away. I actually think I may have accidentally chosen the, uh, the hardest possible challenge, which is losing as quickly as possible without having my plane crash. Oh, I think I'm going to die. Yeah, I died. I crashed again. I still have not managed to destroy all of the cities. This is rather challenging. Maybe I'll do it again. I'm ready for you this time. My arms are wide open. Deliver your nuclear hellfire unto my unsuspecting populace. I think what we can conclude is I'm just too good at video games to really ever see the true ending. There goes Amsterdam. Ooh, shot down one of my own planes. All right, that might be the end of a round, maybe. No, one more. Oh, God. I'm so close. Okay, so that's the end of a round. I just don't know if the Warsaw Pact has it in, in them. Perhaps if they converted to a capitalist wartime economy, their military would, you know, do a little better. I feel like they should take this suggestion on board, frankly. You know, there just isn't that much to protect anymore. I mean, Paris is nice in the spring. There goes Brussels. 
Now, one thing about this game is that it does go faster as you complete waves. So, and not just in terms of sending more planes, but the planes themselves seem to move faster. I don't know how that works, but it seems to. So that might be part of the strategy here, the, the ultimate death strategy, uh, is to um, try to get to the later rounds and then let them murder you only in those later rounds. I'm almost out of fuel. I don't know how many more they got. There's someone up north. Oh, no, I'm not going to make it. Oh, and I crashed. That's it. Nuclear war is unlosable. Surely it's got to be possible to lose this way. If you manage it, please record your screen and share it with me. I'd love to see it. There's a couple more very strange things about AWACS. There's no indication anywhere in the software that I could find of who made it, who published it. Usually you'd see an author credit at least, even if it was an amateur effort. With AWACS, there's nothing. Another weird detail is if you tap the B key, the game seemingly intentionally drops you into the Apple II machine language monitor. This makes me suspect that AWACS was an unfinished game. It was something that was in development and somehow either leaked or was just abandoned and given out openly to the world. I know I played this game in the early 80s, but I'll tell you, there's almost nothing about it on the internet. You can find the disk images at the Asimov Apple II archive, and Jason Scott's textfiles.com has a couple of pieces of documentation written for it by essentially fans. There's another game called AWACS that appeared in the magazine Creative Computing. And there are several versions that are basically inspired by that game. They tend to be much slower than this game is. This feels like perhaps it was inspired by that idea, but is much more on the arcade game side of the spectrum. Thanks for watching. If you have any strange old computer games you'd like to hear about, leave a message in the comments. <laughs>